Micro animations are a great way to add some delight to your product. Whether you're tackling an iOS, Android, web, or React Native project, Lottie remains the library of choice for implementing high quality, lightweight animations. And to be honest, the whole workflow for creating animations with Lottie is pretty nice. So I'm gonna be taking an icon from the Hero Icon Library, animating it in After Effects, and exporting it ready for use with Lottie. So without further ado, let's get into it. So this is my design here, and the icon I want to be animating today is this guy. It's an icon from the Hero Icons library, and you can grab it from just going with check circle. And then we just copy the SVG in here, and then we paste. Just going to drag it over here, and you can see that there's just a couple of glitches. So I'm just going to jump over, I'm going to hit K for the scale tool, and I'm going to hold Alt and Shift, and I'm just going to scale it till we hit 128 pixels as our size. And you can see that there's that little bit of a glitch there. So I'm command clicking into here. I'm just gonna zoom in and I'm going to delete um, just that additional line there. Um, you can see here how I wanted a bit more of a sharp look that rather than this rounded look that Hero Icons gives us. So how we're gonna change that is I'm just gonna click this shape in here and I'm gonna change this to none. And then I'm going to click this little guy and then I'm going to change the joints to square. It's got this as a complete shape. So I'm just going to hit delete so I can access this bit in the middle. See how it's looking a little bit truncated now that we've got rid of the round caps on this check. So I'm just going to click in, command click in. I'm going to highlight that, go command X. And then I'm going to uh, escape, click on the frame and then paste and that'll paste in place to where we had it before. And again, I'm just gonna hit K to use the scale tool and I'm gonna scale that up to something like maybe 42, 28. And uh, we've got a pretty big size here. So we want these two to match obviously. So I'm just command shift clicking these two and I'm hitting 10 just to bring that out into the line. I might bump that up to uh, 46, 4630. And that's looking pretty good. Um, I'm gonna just hit enter just to highlight these two, use the picker tool. And the beautiful thing about the Hero Icon Library is it's actually um, given us these stroked um, shapes. Most icon libraries will have this outlined to stroke, so it's just one shape. And that's gonna make it a little bit trickier to animate in After Effects. So just the fact that Hero Icon Library has supplied these icons with a stroke rather than as a fill, um, it's gonna enable us to access some vector animations that are built into After Effects. Um, that'll get us animating this icon really quickly. Um, so now that we've got our uh, new check circle icon, I'm just gonna rename that there with Command R. Um, command clicking to collapse that all up. And I'm just gonna export this as an SVG. So it's a plus up here. Now don't worry about the multiply there, we're just transforming it to SVG. And then I'm gonna hit export. Just dropping it into my desktop here and I'm gonna hit save. Unfortunately, After Effects can't manipulate SVGs directly. It needs to be converted into an Adobe Illustrator file before we drag those in and start playing around with it. We've opened up that SVG in Adobe Illustrator and now I'm just going to file, save as, and I'm saving it as a Adobe Illustrator document. Um, so check circle.ai, that's what we're after. Um, we don't have to worry too much about the compatibility features here. Um, we can just click okay that should play pretty nicely in After Effects. So now that we've got After Effects opened here, I'm just gonna go File, Import, File. And just in the desktop here, I'm going for our check circle.ai. You can see here how the SVG is disabled. After Effects won't even let us import that. Um, so we've got the AI there, we're hitting Open. I'm gonna actually import this as footage, uh, merged layers. Uh, we've only got the two layers, so that's all fine. And we've got it there. So we've got that check circle in a composition and we've got that check circle file. I'll, I'll keep this composition. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna right click on this .ai file and I'm gonna go create. And I'm gonna create shapes from vector layer. And now it's given us our outlines. So I'm gonna zoom in here just with the forward brackets um, on the keyboard. And if I go here and I look into the contents, we've got two groups. We've got our check and we've got our circle group. So I'm gonna actually duplicate this file and I'm gonna delete one of these groups just so we have these controlled in separate layers. I find that a little bit easier. So that's all split out into its own files. 
Uh, the second thing we want to check is just the composition length. We're probably only after something that'll last five seconds. Uh, we've got this down as eight seconds here, so I'm just going to change that to five. Uh, click OK there. That's going to trim our composition. And uh, this check circle.ai, we can delete that. We don't need that anymore. Now we're ready to start animating our icon. Uh, so the feature that I'm looking to add in here is you go in this little down arrow here and then just in the contents panel, we're hitting add and we're actually looking for this um, animation called trim paths. And uh, trim paths, it does what it pretty much says on the tin. It'll trim this path to a start and end point. So it means that we'll be able to create a really nice entrance animation just by animating this start value. Now I've got that started, you'll see that we've were, if I animate the start value, it's probably gonna go in the wrong direction. We want a check to go in the other direction. So I'll actually start from the end, which is zero. I'm just gonna click this watch here, and that's gonna be our first keyframe. Um, moving this over, possibly at the, we don't want this animation to go for too long. So we might go at the 45 frame mark, and then I'm just gonna basically punch in 100 here. And, Voila, we've got our check animation. Now, when you're creating animations, you generally want to add some easing rather than this linear animation. It makes it feel a bit more natural. Um, but the thing is, if you right click and click Easy Ease, it eases it in. You can see how that had a different amount of velocity. It started, it eased in, and then it eased back out. Um, this is pretty nice out of the box, but what I like to do is really try to exaggerate this effect. So if I click on this end keyframe here and click this guy up the top here, we get a graph editor. And what this does is it allows us to edit the velocity of our keyframes. So we've kind of got this easy ease here. So you can see how it speeds up right in the middle there and then it starts to slow down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, again, with that end keyframe highlighted, I'm actually just gonna like grab this control here and really just crank that up. So the influence is like, uh, you know, maybe 90% or something. And you can see how that animation, it has a bit more of an exaggerated acceleration and it kind of slows down. And I think that looks pretty nice. So I'm gonna close that graph editor now and it's time to animate our circle. Opening it up and I'm adding that trim paths property. Um, We'll have a quick look at the start and end. Now, that looks like it's working as it should. So uh, I'm just gonna keyframe the start here. Again, not too long of an animation. We might extend this one out to one second. And we'll just add another keyframe here and we'll take change that 100% value down to 0%. And we've got a bit of an animation. So I'm just going to exaggerate the velocity here. So again, I'm just gonna click these two keyframes, right click, Easy ease. And then I'm going to click this last keyframe, going into our graph editor, and I'm going to exaggerate the effect. So uh, let's crank it up to 90% again. And we've got a circle that has a bit of bounce to it. The other property I like to animate is actually the offset, especially for circles. Um, I think it gives a pretty interesting effect. So as this circle goes around, I'm actually going to offset it a little bit. Kind of makes it feel a bit like a loader as it kind of runs across. So if I just crank that up to 100, and then I might just have that run there. Again, right click, easy ease. Let's see how that looks. Whoop, that's a bit confusing. So we'll have it start at the start, and um, we'll actually have it rotate the other way, I think. So I might go minus 100 there. Too easy. And again, just on that last one, highlighting graph editor, I'll crank that influence up. And what I like to do is just have these overlap. So I'll just, something like that. I don't think this is rotating enough for us. So I might just take this to negative one and then put that to zero. So that's gonna make a full loop. Cool, that's going a little bit too fast for my taste. Again, just playing around with these keyframes, seeing what feels natural. Might be a little bit too far again. 
Let's try negative 220. And I might actually start the offset. I think what's tripping me out is just where it starts. So it's kind of like starting up here now. And then we can kind of have that close up a little bit sooner. And that might just again be going a little bit too far. Let's try and drop this down to 180 degrees. And I might just spread that out just a little bit. I might just crank the velocity there again. So if I go to the graph editor, run that influence to 100%. I think that's pretty nice. Now we want the check to kind of happen at the end of the frame. So I'm just going to open this up a little bit more so we can see what's happening here. We've got the circle starting at the zero frames, coming in at about one second and just closing that ring. So I'm going to just drag and select these two keyframes, drag them out and maybe just pop them around here. So the circle kind of comes in. Um, again, this might be a little bit too long for our animation, so we might actually keep it around the one second mark. So I'll just grab these. I've just highlighted these keyframes there and just dragging them in a little bit more. That check could probably come in around here. So we might actually just bring that up through there. I might just extend this so the animation runs for a little bit longer. So now that we've got our animation done, um, I'm just going to Command A, Command click on this arrow, collapse everything up. And if we hit this little transparent toggle transparency grid, um, you can see here we don't actually have a background rendering in our composition. That's exactly what we want. And uh, typically when you're in After Effects, you're quick to hit composition and then you want to hit the add to render queue button and then render this out as a video. But because we're using Lottie, we're going to need to export this out with the extension called body moving. Um, so it's just available on AE scripts. It's body moving for Lottie and um, it's uh, it's free. Um, you can name your price kind of thing and uh, just add to cart and then follow the um, prompts to install. And then when you have that installed, you'll have this body move and extension. Um, so I've just got it checked here and I've just kind of mounted it into the bottom, uh, bottom panel here. And you can see how it'll add automatically all the compositions that we've got in our project. So uh, check circle is the composition that we want to be rendering today. So I'm just going to click that selected button there. And I'm going to jump into settings. Um, so all these are pretty fine. We don't need guides. Um, we don't have hidden layers that need to be exported or anything. So I'm just actually interested in these export modes. By default, it'll export with the standard JSON file, which is what you want to be handing over to developers when you are ready to put this into production. But I also like to just export out a little demo. And this will export a little HTML file that we can view in our browser to make sure it's working all right. So I'm going to hit save on that. And um, you can see how that's all pretty much ready to go. And you just want to make sure that it's saving in a directory. You might have three dots over here. Um, so you either click the dots or click this and just make sure you're saving it in the spot that you want. Uh, in the desktop is where we want our file. So I'm just going to hit save there and I'm going to hit this render button. It's pretty fast. Render finished already. I'm going to hit done. So now in the desktop, I've got that data.json file that I mentioned earlier. So this is the file that you would hand over to a developer uh, so they can get it running in their development environment. Uh, but just to check that this animation is working okay for us in the browser, we've got this demo folder and we've got this data.html file. Um, so it's not going to play in quick view for us. We're going to have to open it up in Chrome. So just dragging and dropping that in and voila, that is our animation playing. Um, so that's how we make an animation in Lottie. As a bit of a stretch goal, I figured we might just keep working with our prototype and chuck it into a little bit of a screen. Unfortunately, Figma doesn't support advanced animations like Lottie or dropping in videos or dropping in PNG sequences. So to, I suppose, prototype this for a client, uh, we would actually have to render out a video. Uh, but the process is pretty simple. So click on the confirmation screen. I'm scrolling down here and then on the export, I just want to export it out. It's two times as a PNG. Nice and flat for After Effects. I've got that saved to the desktop. Now that we've got that confirmation screen, I'm just gonna go and drag and drop that into 
After Effects. I'm gonna drag this file into the new composition icon and we have our mock-up. If I just go to composition settings, we rendered this out as two times. So I'm gonna divide this width by two just to get it as 375. I'm clicking on the layer there and I'm hitting S. I'm just gonna change that scale to 50%. Now, so it just renders out a little bit sharper. Uh, so now that we've got this check circle composition, we just gotta drag and drop it into this composition. Um, I'm gonna give it just a second so that we can see what that animation is. I'm hitting P and I'm just scaling that up, getting that in the right spot there. Uh, so that's pretty close. Uh, we've got a bit of a double up happening there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to grab the rectangle tool and I'm just gonna mask it out. Uh, so that'll do us there. It's white, it's on a white background. Obviously if we had a more complex background, we would have omitted that. Um, so it was a clean slate to work with, um, but it's nice to have a guide sometimes. So I'm just dragging and dropping this layer in below our check circle composition. This is rendering out as five second composition. Up to you if you think that that's long enough. I think that might be a little bit too long. So I'm just gonna truncate that, maybe around the three second mark. So I'm gonna go end there. And we'll just have a slightly shorter video. So now that we've got that ready to go as a bit of a prototype, um, we can export it. So if we go composition and then add to Adobe Media Encoder, um, that's gonna boot up Adobe Media Encoder for us. All right, Media Encoder has boot up for us. And this is pretty much the settings we want, H.264. Uh, we wanna make sure it's match source, high bit rate. And we're just gonna click on this and I'm just going to export it out to the desktop. So I'm gonna hit save here, confirmation screen. And then once we hit the play button here, it'll start rendering out our prototype. This will take a little while. Wonderful. And now that's rendered. So now on the desktop, we've got that animated mock-up in an MP4 that we can easily share around on Slack or um, however you prefer to distribute your videos. And that's all there is to it. We've not only got an animated mock-up that we can present to a client for approval, but we have that animation in a format that's ready to drop into any development environment. So as always, please let me know what you create in the comments below and thanks for watching.